Hey guys, welcome back to Unit 22, the Civil Rights Movement. Um, just wanted to draw your attention to the website real quick. If you look at it, and we kind of scroll down, in week two, I threw together a bunch of video clips for you. Now, some of them are not the best, most informative video clips of all time, but they're just to kind of spark your curiosity, spark your intrigue, on different possibilities for the origins of the civil rights movement, right? A lot of these are probably more counterclaims than they are actual claims, but it's still something to help round out those mind maps that in all likelihood will transfer to essays in class and then ultimately maybe essays um, uh, on the IB exam, all right? So that's what these are here for, all right? Without further ado, let's get into that development of the civil rights movement. This is where we left off, right? Kind of where many believe the civil rights movement uh, firmly begins, and that is Brown v. Board and that court decision that overturns Posse v. Ferguson, and then the subsequent desegregation of schools in the South, the Little Rock Nine being probably the most famous of the bunch. Um, that is where Governor Orver Orville Faubus sends the National Guard to the school to turn black students away. Uh, crowds of angry white protesters kind of made sure that the black students did not get in to that school. So Dwight D. Eisenhower, really the first time we see the federal government superseding the state government, sorry, um, ascends the 101st Airborne in to kind of supervise these black students going into the school. And that is going to give kind of... Um, uh, a give way to the Civil Rights Act of 1957 being passed. These are some pictures of the Little Rock Nine. This is the Civil Rights Act of 1957, which states that a federal um, office cannot, uh, not, that a federal office can prosecute individuals who deny people the right to vote. All right, so this is completely making illegal poll tax, grandfather calls, literacy tests, uh, or any other kind of means in which Southerners were blocking blacks from the right to either register or physically vote, right? So that's a big act, and that will kind of loop back around again uh, in the not-so-distant uh, future. Um, this is one of the next things I wanted to draw your attention to. This is Emmett Till. All right, Emmett Till is going to be a 14-year-old uh, Chicago native um, that is visiting family in the South, right? Um, the story goes that he either whistled or said, hey, baby, to a, a married white woman, um, and he's going to be murdered for it by, uh, I believe, the wife's husband and brother. Um, brutally, brutally murdered for it. Uh, there is a picture of Emmett Till before. Here's a picture of Emmett Till after. All right. Unfortunately, this is not kind of uh, an exception of what was going on in the South. A lot of black people, black children, black boys, black girls were being killed by white people, especially when you talk about the KKK and their involvement in the violence in the South. Uh, but what makes this one special is the fact that he was from Chicago. OK, um, as soon as this happens, the NAACP is going to become involved. Right. And they see. Um, an opportunity here, all right? They say an opportunity for exposure, all right? During this time period, what we have to kind of realize is that enacting white Northerners, especially white Northern women, um, into the plight of blacks in the country at the time was paramount, right? You had a large portion of black women who were, uh, no, I'm sorry, of white women who were also fighting for their own civil rights at the time, right? Yes, they got the right to vote, but they're still not really all that equal in terms of society, in terms of economy, and in terms of the workforce. I'll be right back. All right, so getting the attention of those white women is huge, all right? And that's where they feel that Emmett Till is going to come into play, that this is going to make northern newspapers. This is going to make newspapers across the country, and it's going to make a lot of noise, all right? And another thing that they do that was, you know, in retrospect, a really genius move is they convince Emmett Till's mother to hold an open casket, right, to really draw attention to how brutal, brutal this murder was. Right. And then to make matters even worse, the people that killed him are tried by an all white jury and they are set free. 
Okay, so Emmett Till, the, the, the situation in the subsequent court case are going to bring a lot of attention to what was really going on in the South, right? A lot of these Northerners, Northern Blacks, Northern Whites, whoever, are unaware of how bad it was in the South, right? And this is another example of de facto versus de jure, right? Is racism uh, uh, obsolete in the North? Obviously not. But it is very rare for cases to be this extreme in the North, right? And it's very care. Uh, it's very rare for things like poll tax and 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 po uh, uh, literacy tests and all of the other things that were going on. It's rarer in the North than the South. So this is going to give the Northerners a glimpse into what Southern life was really truly like, and they are appalled. And it's going to lead to a lot more activists kind of lending their hand to the civil rights movement, okay? Um, I also want to bring your attention to this one right here. All right, this is Rosa Parks, okay? Um, a lot of you know who she is. You've heard this name before. She's, you know, probably one of the most famous people of the 20th century, especially in American history, all right? The story goes, she was kind of tired, work one day, she didn't want to get up from her seat, uh, the buses were segregated, she didn't want to get up from her seat, and she's going to get arrested. Um, that's not the actual story, right? Um, the actual story is, is, is a couple things, all right? Uh, number one, she was not the first black woman to do this, okay? Uh, Claudette Colvin um, is, I think she was like 17 years old at the time, is going to be the first black woman to refuse to get up on a bus, all right? Except Claudette Colvin was not that marketable. Um, she was not really the face that the civil rights movement was looking for, right? She was a little bit darker skin. Um, she was definitely younger, so her voice was not as loud. Um, she was pregnant, and again, it's not really the marketable look that the NAACP was looking for. So, they are going to select Rosa Parks to be the next black woman to do this. And they thought that this woman, who they could paint as, as older and gentle and just tired... Uh, they could paint that picture across the nation. In reality, Rosa Parks was none of those words, right? She was a strong, proud, activist black woman who was a part of the NAACP for a very long time, all right? But her face is going to become a new symbol of the civil rights movement, and it's going to lead to the Montgomery bus boycott, okay? So Montgomery, Alabama, is where these events took place, okay? And as a result of her being arrested... Black people in Montgomery are going to boycott the bus system, right? They are going to refuse to ride the bus, all right? Um, this is going to go on for a long time. For over a year, no black people rode the public transportation system of Montgomery, Alabama, all right? Um, by the time this was all said and done, I think it's something like $1.7 million in revenue were lost by the city because of this boycott, all right? So this is actually a really paramount part of the civil rights movement because now blacks are showing not only their kind of political uh, worth, but they're showing their economic worth as well. And they're showing that if they can get bound together by a strong leader, that they can make strides for this equality that they're looking for. All right, uh, big deal here. In 56, the Supreme Court is going to outlaw bus segregation. So that's another kind of effect of the Montgomery bu bu bus boycott. But probably the biggest effect of the Montgomery bu bus boycott is that man right there. Okay, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is going to be a reverend in Alabama. He is going to kind of rise to uh, a moral um and 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 verbal figurehead leader for this new civil rights movement he is going to come to the uh, uh the, the forefront and he is going to preach nonviolence he is going to preach religion he's going to intertwine religion into the civil rights movement which is going to activate a lot more of those northerners because now this is a religious thing right this is a catholic uh, a christian thing to do is equality right um, so he is going to attack the civil rights movement from a lot of different angles. You all know who MLK is, uh, so I don't think I have to go into a lot of detail about the background of him. But peaceful protest, 
uh, the word of God and civil disobedience, right? Black people are now going to make noise and they're going to do it in an organized, peaceful way, but they're going to make strides for that equality under his leadership. And um, one of the things he does is he's going to give way to these three grassroots organizations that I'll pick up with in video two, kind of breaking down who each of them are and then what each of them did. Um, let me know if you have any questions. As always, be good.